figured I would talk about this very quickly. This is an AE1. Um, I don't plan on doing like a lot of these like under the hood series, so to speak. We do want to talk about some things really quickly. These are some common issues, potential causes to those issues. So for instance, if the light meter is always on, the battery seems to drain very quickly. Could be any number of things, but what I've seen primarily is these contacts here. There are three different, well, two contacts technically, um, but this is SW1, SW2, I believe that's what it is. Yeah, I think those are what those are called. Th th these are switches basically. So upon depressing this, that first contact, that should trigger the light meter. When you press down fully, that will fire there. But however, the housing here sometimes can get a little screwy. And when that happens, what you'll see is those contacts are constantly depressed upon one another. And basically that will drain the battery because it thinks it's constantly being turned on basically. Moving on, we have this here. This is the worst design. This is the worst design, and then this is the second worst design. This flex circuit here is incredibly fragile, and these battery doors go bad very easily. So what happens is people imagine the top is on this camera. Someone's like, oh, the battery door is bad. So I'm just gonna pop this open, and then you move this up, this rod up here, and then you kind of lift this and remove the door. I believe I have a video on it, I'll put that right there. However, when you lift this up, if you lift too hard, then you are prone to slicing this in half. I've seen it, I've done it, it happens to the best of us. So that's something to be wary of. If you do that, you basically break the camera, you have to take it all apart. And either replace this with a wire, or I don't know, if you are really good at soldering, which I am not, you can find a way to fuse this flex circuit back together. I've not done that, but it's been done. Next up, we have the tungsten wire, which sits back here. you be able to get a better view of it, like so. I uh, got the little reels for it all along here. And basically what this does is it maintains tension for this over here. Now, recently I watched someone's reel on Instagram where they just kind of took this off willy-nilly, which was really tough to watch, and I don't really comment on people's stuff, especially if I don't know them, but I did comment on this person's account, because I was like, straight up, that's wrong. Uh, you're supposed to remove the shutter speed dial at bulb in 3200, that is what, it, it's a unanimous thing, that's not up for debate, because if you don't, then the tension that is on the system is different and it's hard to reset and you can't get as accurate of light meter readings otherwise it's a whole thing but this dude was just kind of ripping it off i think he had a, like a 1000 and 100 he's like yeah well it's the way i do it i'm like all right well it's wrong <laughs> but i mean to each their own and then someone else commented on my comment and they're like yeah no he's right and i was like yes yes <laughs> but i just thought it was kind of funny anyway so that's this whole system here this tungsten wire is told to be unbreakable in the manual. Don't believe everything you read. These do snap often, especially with these systems being as old as they are. So what happens when that happens? What happens when that happens? The effects of that happening. Uh, camera's not receiving proper inputs, cannot fire properly at the right speeds. The light meter readings are different. Any number of those things can really happen. It's pretty tantamount to the overall functionality of the camera that this tungsten wire is intact and has the right uh, tension to it. So that's something to be wary of. I need to stop hitting this. Uh, two other things I wanna go over quickly. If the camera advance is stalling out, what is occurring is the uh, plastic grommets that kind of weld this cover into place. These items down there. Those have broken off and fallen into the camera, the advanced column, and have gummed it up to some degree. Now, if the opposite is happening, where the camera is just advancing continuously, what is happening at that point is the uh, clutch mechanism here, that typically sits here, I've got this one ripped off because I had to replace it with this one. Uh, the clutch mechanism that sits here and applies the right amount of tension for this little hammer is broken in half. What's gonna happen is I can continue to advance. 
and that kind of goofs up the entire system because of course it does. That does happen because sometimes this piece here is plastic and the plastic snaps in half. Don't ask me why they did that, I have no idea. I really wish I could ask because it's a terrible decision, but it is how it happened. There's something to be said for that. So if you're having issues where the advance is just continually going, that's probably what's causing it. Or it could be something, hopefully it's something easier, where the bottom magnet needs to be cleaned off because this is not making proper contact. So that's pretty much it. Those are like some of the easier to diagnose issues for yourself. If you have an AE1 and it's exhibiting any of those problems, it's, I won't say more than likely the cause for it, but that's like, that can be some potential causes. Now there's other issues with the light meter being off partially, uh, shutter speeds being off. There's all sorts of real issues with these systems and that's just due to age, faulty electronics, all these things. Uh, the design itself is fairly simple. Uh, I think this is the worst iteration of it as proven by the tungsten wire, which is not seen in the A1 program or the A1, which both exhibit similar properties, both mechanically and electrically. This is just the oldest version. So it's prone to more failures. And those are some of the more common ones. Well, more common, less common ones. Uh, some relative gives you their camera and it's like exhibiting those issues. That's kind of where you can start to diagnose it. And that way, if you do take it into a shop or if you request me to repair it, you'll kind of have a better idea, make more educated decisions on whether or not you want to actually get the system replaced or if you want to just return it to the seller, get a new thing or try and sell it to someone for parts. If you do ever want to sell things for parts, let me know. I would happily buy some parts cameras off of you because I always need them for things. But that's pretty much it. Canon AE-1, it's a good system. I do enjoy repairing them quite a bit. It just sometimes can be a bit of a challenge. So. I hope this helps you moving forward. Again, I don't think I'm going to make like a actual series of this, but just as things kind of come up and as I learn more about these systems, I want to share that with you. Make sure to like the video if you did like it, subscribe to the channel for more content such as this. Appreciate you and your support, and I will catch you on the next video.